Hi, I'm Willow, and I'm 28 years old. I've been through quite a bit growing up with my parents getting divorced when I was very young. So I know what it feels like to see two of the most important people in your life split apart. Years and years later, I would witness another messy divorce that would need my intervention. My sister-in-law, Alex, and her husband, Phil. To start from the start, I got married to my longtime boyfriend, George. George and his sister were always miles apart, whether it was in terms of distance or personality. George was passionate and gentle, while Alex always seemed uninterested in just about anything and was a stubborn and insensitive person. They never really got along, and the same goes for my in-laws. My mother-in-law, Nikki, and father-in-law, Tom, weren't very proud of her either. Alex had been through a divorce already, and her two kids had become Phil's as well. They had their third, and then Phil decided to divorce her for reasons that only became clear later on. Here's how we found out. Hey guys, do you mind if I crash at yours for a little while? Alex had randomly showed up at our place on a Sunday afternoon. Me and George were just about to finish lunch. We wondered what was going on, but knew that she had gotten herself into trouble again. Alex was just the kind of person who wouldn't talk to you unless she needed help. What's going on, Alex? Why aren't you at yours? Yeah, I had some trouble back home and the kids were being annoying as usual. Being a mother is not easy. It's not like you guys would know anything about it. Do you really expect help when you have a mouth like that? I'm sorry, I can't help it. Just let me crash for one night and then I'll be out of your hair for sure. Just one night. Please, please, please. I really don't know if Willow will. It's okay. I chimed in before he could finish the sentence. I wasn't big on trying to help her. The rest of the family had already warned me about it, but I wanted to get her out of the corridor at least. One night couldn't hurt. Are you sure about this? Yeah, just put her in the guest room. This is going to be a pain, fine. You can come in, but you'll follow the rules? Oh, you're the best big brother! She said and gave George a big hug, which in return, only out of curiosity, it looks like Alex quickly made herself at home. She come with a suitcase, so I knew things were messy at her place. We assumed it was a fight and she wanted nothing to do with it, so we didn't ask. She threw her boots away around in the bed and only arranged them nicely after George asked her about five times. She didn't talk to us the entire day, and we didn't try to indulge her much. Just pretended she wasn't there. A day passed and then one more. George and I had to go to work and, and weren't sure if we wanted to leave the house to Alex alone. I thought you said it was only for one night. Oh, oh, add a few more to my package, big bro. You know you want me around. No, no, we don't. We've been very generous, but you need to leave now. But I followed the rules. And I appreciate that, but you've been here far longer than you said. We can't keep serving you fresh meals every day of the month. Why aren't you going to work? Oh, I quit. They were too toxic for me. Oh, sure they were toxic. Look, just pack up today and get going. That day we went to work anxiously. I didn't engage much in conversation with Alex. George said she'd annoy me to no ends if I did, and I believed him. I was scared the whole time I would come back to my house being completely trashed, like it's happened with that married couple on the news a few years back. But surprisingly, the house was all the same. Sadly, that meant Alex had never left her room and slept it off all day. Just as I and George were about to call her out for dinner, there was a knock on the door. We opened it to see George's parents on the other side. Mom, Dad, what is this? Hey there, kiddo. Mind if we come in? Tom stood rather soberly as Nikki gave me and George a warm hug. Hi, sweet pea. Oh, I've missed you too. Of course you guys can come in, please. The two of them walked in and settled down with us around the kitchen table. They looked rather serious and worried. Tom put his hands on the table and looked grim as he spoke the next words. Have you heard from your sister in a while, George? Me and George exchanged a look. What kind of trouble had Alex made now? We knew something was wrong, but this wrong? So you have. How much do you know? We know something went wrong at her house, and we know she's living in our guest room for the next three days. She's here? Yeah, she showed up at the door a few days ago. We decided to let her stay in because she said it would be for one night. Now it's been several. She won't leave. God, I need to have a talk with her then. It's perfect, but we'll do that later. 
Guys, what's going on? Is she in really bad trouble? I'd say she's at greater risk of putting someone else in trouble. Her kids and Phil. Oh, poor Phil. What happened? The two of them are getting divorced. In fact, they've already gotten the papers and are discussing custody. She's trying to take all the kids away from Phil. Oh, heavens, no! She's a terrible mother, George. She'll ruin those kids' lives. Phil is a good man, a capable man. He came to us yesterday and he broke into tears of talking about the children. He loves them so much and can provide for them and give them a good life. Meanwhile, Alex has been on the phone since she got here and has quit her job because apparently it was toxic. Ugh, this girl never even makes a single improvement. She's still exactly the way she was when she was a teenager. Good. Sometimes I feel like it's my fault for being too soft on her. It's not you, Dad. I mean, come on. I turned out all right. Tom chuckled and relaxed for a bit. There was silence as we contemplated our actions. There was no doubt that Alex would make one terrible mother. She cared very little for anyone else around her and it showed. I wouldn't be surprised if the same applied to her children and husband as well. The family supported her marriage with Phil because he was so much better than her ex. A good and kind family man, but clearly, it's her who's the bigger problem. Now we have to decide how to handle the situation. Everyone wanted Phil to win, but we didn't know if he could. There was no way Alex would get all the kids, but her having even one of them would be bad for the kid, especially because it meant separating from his or her siblings. When Alex joined us at the table, things did not go as planned. So that crybaby came and whined to my parents? Oh god! It's just so typical of him, always playing the victim. I bet he told you I'm not good enough to be a mother. He didn't. We just figured it out for ourselves. Dad, are you seriously going to take his side on this whole thing? I'm your daughter! Honey, it's not about taking sides. It's about what's good for the kids. You don't even have a job anymore. I don't need a job. He'll give me plenty of alimony and child support. No work for the rest of my life. See, this is the kind of attitude is exactly why we think you're going to mess up. You don't want to work, and all you want to do is sit around. Phil says you won't even feed the kids if they're hungry sometimes, allowing them in the kitchen by themselves. Enough! She got to her feet and pushed her plate off the table. It went straight to the ground and shattered into pieces. Tom got extremely angry with her too and stood at his feet. Apologize right now. You're not 15 anymore. Act like it. I'll act however I want. I knew I shouldn't have stayed here for more than a night. I'm leaving. She said that and took off to her room to pack up her stuff and leave. Tom screamed, Come back here! This isn't over yet! But she didn't listen. We were unable to get even a single word in. She just walked away as Tom and George tried to tell her to behave like an adult and at least talk about it. Everyone just yelled a whole lot while I picked up the pieces of the broken plate from the floor. Nikki looked traumatized from all the yelling and soon started crying a little. I understand how a mother's heart must break to see her daughter go through stuff like this and behave this way. I supported Nikki and others tried to calm her down for a good half hour. We realized that we had a problem on our hands and had no way of solving it. We thought meeting Phil once and discussing how we could help would be a good idea, but the week had more surprises for us. Tom and Nikki stayed at our place because it was too late to go out, and they were mentally exhausted with everything that had happened that day. The next morning, we had an expected and three unexpected guests at our door. Well, technically they were in the driveway. Alex stood there with a large suitcase and fancier clothes. Her three children were standing behind her. Alex, what's going on here? Why are the kids here? It's like six in the morning. They must have school. They do. And it's your responsibility to take them. You see, all of you think I'm such a terrible mother, but know nothing about my life. So I'm leaving them here with you. What? That's right, kids, go inside Auntie Willow's house. She'll give you something to eat, won't she, Auntie Willow? What do you think you're doing? And where are you off to now? I have some money saved up, a little trip here and a little trip there. I'll be back in no time. And how long is that exactly? Two months, give or take. Bye! Alex, stop! You can't! She didn't listen to a word and sped off in her car. 
The kids had already gone inside and the door was open. I felt a weight on my shoulders that I've never felt before. Alex was right about me never being a mother. I and George didn't want to be a parent because it wasn't our way of life. At least not then. But taking care of three kids so suddenly when their mother just went off on a trip? It was outlandish. I went in and gave the little ones some cereal and milk and told them that there would be no school that day. George was a light sleeper and woke up because all the commotion, so we let the kids snuggle in on our bed. I'm going to call the kids Junior, Phil's son, Paul and Kitty, Alex's kids from a previous marriage. These are not their real names, just trying to protect their identity. Do you think Phil knows about this? What, that she left us at our door suddenly? No, I wouldn't think so. We should call and ask. Okay, wait. He rang Phil up and he picked up faster than we could blink. Hello, George. Phil, hi, um, listen, I just want you to know that the kids are with us and they're okay. Oh, thank God, I was about to call the police. I thought she took them with her and went to Mexico or whatever. They're all right? They're all with you, right? Yes, all three of them are here and asleep in our bed. You can come and take them later if you'd like. I'd say they should sleep a little today, though. Yes, yes, thank you. You have no idea how much relief you just made me feel. I'll come get them in some time. All right, Phil, take it easy. It'll be all right. I feel so bad for him. Yeah. Why a smart man like that ever decides to fall for my sister, I'll never know. Kids, what's going on? You sleep, Dad. This is a lot to take in this early. I was in the army, George. You keep forgetting. Now tell me what's going on. Go take a look in our room. Tom gave us a suspicious and curious look before he walked over to our room and switched the light on for a quick second. He quickly turned it off and came back running. What's going on? When did they get here? She dropped them off a little while ago. She said she was going away on vacation for like two months and asked me to take care of her children. See how being a mother feels. Oh my god, this girl. Can you believe she's my blood sometimes? I'm so sorry for everything, little baby. I didn't know it would. It's okay. It's okay, Tom. It's not your fault. She's on her path and we've tried to help. God, I wish it helped. Does Phil know? Yeah, we called him and told him. He'll come get them on later. Oh, okay, okay. That's good. Maybe you're right, kid. I'll go and lie down again. It indeed is too early, even for the army. Tom retired to his room and me and George sat in the kitchen silently sipping some coffee. Later, when Nikki and Tom woke up again, they cooked up a plan that sounded bizarre to us. No, we can't do this. This might mess things up. We can. We totally can. I'll prove everything. I'm not the one for theatrics, but I think this will work, honey. I don't know about this, really. I mean, they're kids. It might not be right. Maybe, but it's for the greater good. It will save their lives. Making them refuse to recognize their own mother? I think that's going to be almost impossible. I mean, Paul is almost eight. Well, we'll tell them it's a prank. I know Alex won't be able to digest it and lose her mind. That's where we come in. It will work, trust me. Fine, but if anyone asks, it's your idea and yours alone, Dad. Deal. Now let's get started. And so it began. A play or prank, call it whatever you'd like. Tom and Nikki began training the kids to not recognize their mom for fun. Surprisingly, Paul was quickly on the team and wanted to prank his mom. The other two, Kitty and Junior, were a little too small to understand it all. Junior was only about three years old and didn't understand much at all, so we'd given up hope for him. Phil came over to our place that day and everyone filled him on what the plan was. He was hesitant and didn't want his kids used for a weird prank, but Tom is a very convincing man. He told Phil he could come and play with the kids whenever he wanted for those two months. And then Tom said, Once she comes back, I promise you the kids are all yours. That sentence had Phil convinced for good. He was scared that Alex would get at least one or two of their children, and none of them would be safe with her. So he took the chance. He trusted the four of us with not harming the kids in any way, and so he went along with it. Every day, Tom and Nikki would hold training sessions. And what do we say when Mom walks into the house? We say nothing and behave like we don't know her. Very good. Here's a chocolate for you and one for you. What do we do when Mom starts asking questions? We pretend we don't understand. Unless, of course, we actually don't understand. 
Oh, you added your own sentence. How smart of you. Things like this happen daily at home. Every morning was a prank training session. The kids were told that they could knock it off once they were told to and go give their mom the biggest hug if they wanted to. And every morning, I and George would take turns dropping them off to school or after these sessions. Soon the day of the big reveal would arrive. It was a Thursday, if I'm not wrong. George had come home with the kids from school to find me, Nikki, and Tom sitting around the table with Alex telling us stories from Mexico. A bit of the plan that we couldn't have controlled was the way Junior wiggled his way into Alex's arm as soon as she entered the house. But he was a baby, so it was fine. We never expected him to understand anyway. Things took a turn when the other kids went along with the plan. Hi, my babies. Did you miss your mommy? Alex stood there with her arms wide as Kitty and Paul remembered what they had to do. Without hesitation, they ran straight into me and Nikki instead and didn't turn their faces to Alex for a minute. Paul? Kitty? What are you doing? Why don't you come to mommy? The kids did not respond. It got Alex going and she came close to Paul who was hugging me to avoid Alex. She gently grabbed her arm to make him turn around and he did. Where are your manners, Polly? Won't you give mama a hug? I'm sorry, but you're not my mama. My mama went to a trip to China. What? No, I'm right here. I'm your mama. Now come here, kitty. What are you doing? Don't you want to go home? This is our home. Go away. What's wrong with you two? That was it. Alex began yelling. It hadn't even been five minutes since the prank started. She had no remorse and no control. She squeezed Paul's little hand and tried yanking him away from me. You will listen to me. You will obey me. I'm your mother, now get your hands off of her, or I'm sending you both to boarding school. Hey, that's no way to treat a child. Let go of his arm. No, he's mine. I'll do whatever I want to him. You step off. Alex, let go of his hand. You're hurting him. I don't care. I gave him birth, and I can hurt him too. Can't I, Polly? Now let go of her and come to your real mom. Paul was being uncharacteristically strong against Alex. When he didn't budge at all, Alex let go of his hand and tried getting to Kitty instead. You! Bad girl! Let go of Grandma and come to me! No! Go away! I like Grandma! No! Bad girl! Do you want to be locked in your room again? Let go of her! Bad girl! That's enough! And that's when Tom pushed a button that did the job that needed to be done. The kids finally let go and ran to Alex. They embraced her and the prank was over. She thought she'd won, but she had no idea what she walked into. I don't know what you guys have been up to, but you won't take my kids from me. I'm going home. I'll bring you all to court if I have to. She said that and tried leaving, but I'd already called Phil and he was waiting by the door. So it's done? Yup. I'll email you a copy. Wait, what's going on? You've been pranked, honey, and we've all seen it. That was the worst prank I- Don't worry, you haven't seen the recording yet. The what? Yeah, everything you did. Recorded. A trendy little wall camera I got from the internet. Technology is wonderful, isn't it? I- You messed up. You showed them what you really like. Phil took Junior from Alex's arms and handed her the divorce papers. I've signed them. You do it too. The tape will go directly to the judge. I'll see you in court. Thanks, guys. I owe you one. Phil proceeded to take the kids into his car and back home. Alex rushed into her car and went somewhere else for the night probably back to one of her friends' place. The divorce went through a little while later, and Alex lost custody. She was still eligible for alimony, and so she managed to get away with that, but Phil got to keep all the kids. Now they visit me and George every other weekend. When they're not at our place, they go to Tom and Nikki's. We didn't need kids. We had these little angels to ourselves. Alex got served cold revenge and justice for the things that she had said to me and done to the kids. It's been two years since then. Paul is 10, and Junior has started kindergarten. They see their mom on supervised visits every once in a while. But apart from that, Alex is far away as possible. <laughs>